And some business stories now. Lagos State government has restated its readiness to encourage trade and investments to combat poverty and unemployment in the state. Commissioner for Corporate Cooperatives, Trade and Investment, Mrs. Fola Shade Ambrose Madebem, disclosed this during a training put together by the state government in partnership with African Import and Export Solutions Limited and Export and Sell USA with theme Export to Wealth. Participants were trained on warehousing, dispatching, export licensing, accessibility, profitability, uh, accessing profitability, software windows, finding buyers, listing, and management of on Amazon and others. Mrs. Uh, Ambrose Madabem adds that the state has a mandate to grow local production capacity to meet export needs through AFCFTA and encourage exporters to leverage agreements amongst other platforms for exports. The governor has demonstrated his commitment and that's our job to partner with, because as you know, the government cannot do it all. But what we will do is partner with those that we feel can enable us to collectively accelerate and achieve the desired outcome. There are so many opportunities out there and when we're talking about Lagos, and I repeat, Lagos State is the fifth largest country um, in, you know, in Africa. In terms of GDP, 30%. In terms of investment opportunities, in terms of oppor you know, standards and, and where you can even operate. We have the Lekki Trade Free Zone, which is another opportunity for where you can come and MSMEs can come and set up shop and work. We're teaching businesses, Nigerian businesses, how to start exporting, how to start earning in dollars. It's time we stop complaining and start acting. You know, and that's the action we're putting in place, telling businesses and lecturing them but now to start exporting and heading foreign exchange. We have small businesses that are not uh, positioning their products right. The packaging is wrong, the labeling is wrong. We have gone through a practical session that shows them the things to do. And then we also looked at other aspects, how to shape all the licenses they need to get. And we ended the session with a, the ways for them to find buyers abroad. Nigeria's trade surplus has declined by a whopping 99.7%, raising serious concerns about the state of the nation's economy. This significant drop comes alongside a surge in imports to a 16-year high, placing significant strain on the country's foreign reserves. Industry sector analyst Chapel Hill Denham, Mr. James Oladisa, spoke to us earlier on the impact and, of course, of these um, figures released by the NBS. We are importing a lot more than we are exporting, and that has caused a shrink in, you know, the trade um, surplus or trade balance. And you know, if you look at the numbers, you would see that um, imports rose by about 40% in naira terms, and we saw exports rise by about 34%. So clearly, we saw a faster rise in imports than in exports. But I think the the true picture of our trade data. Um, is clear if we look at these numbers in dollar terms. So if you convert our, you would see that you know there was a decline indeed but for total trade by about 7.5 percent, and this was primarily driven by a drop in exports by about 9 percent, right? And this can simply be explained by um, the 22 percent moderation that we saw in crude oil prices globally, and we also saw a decline in imports by about 5 percent. I know this is also expected, given that in 2023, um, Nigeria suffered a devaluation. And as such, we would expect that imports to be much more expensive moving forward and um, exports to be cheaper. There has been renewed investors' interest in equities of quoted companies expecting dividends from their 2023 performances. If you get up reports. Market investors seem to have spotted huge values in many companies as their annual reports are being awaited. The expectation moves to investors and fund managers who think and calculate dividend payouts coming from different companies. The banks take prime attention from market dealers who have regarded liquidity in trades as key. UBA came strong with maximum 10% as investors ran after the stock. Access Holding, recovering from the shocks of the death of their former CEO, ripped more than 9% on gains table. First Bank Holding, Zenith Bank, and MCN Nigeria all took positions on the gains table. Strong activities on the floor kicked index upward by 1.45%, stressing the pattern of bid on securities. More than 500 million units of shares were crossed 
In key sectors of the market with the value hitting 14 billion naira. Companies that led the trading floor with losses included Nascon, Dangote Sugar, Jaya's Bank, Transcorp, and Wema Bank. If young Ecop TV News, Lagos. A gauge of global stocks retreated for a second straight session, easing further from a record highs ahead of U.S. inflation data this week, which could heavily influence the Federal Reserve's interest rate part. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 0.12 percent, S&P 500 lost 0.11 percent, Nasdaq Composite Index fell 0.41 percent, MSCI's gauge of stocks, according to Globe, fell 0.33 percent, the Stock 600 Index closed down 0.35 percent. Also, Europe's broad FTSE Euro's first 300 index ended down by 0.32%, weighed down by technology sector declines. And crude oil prices rose early in Asian trade, but prices moved uh, well limited as markets uh, awaited for the monthly reports of oil agencies. Now, U.S. West Texas intermediate crude fell to sell at $78.21 with an upsurge of 0.36%. Brent crude features also experienced an uptake of 0.41%, selling at $82.55. Bonnie Light falls and is selling at $85.58 with an upward price review of 0.53%. On the OPEC basket, crude dealers are offering $83.08 with an upward price margin of 0.45%.